Okay, everybody. So welcome to tonight's webinar. Thank you all for being so prompt. That's great. So we can get a good start at uh, bang on eight o'clock. And tonight's webinar, as you can see from the first slide there, is all about getting started. And this is one of a series of eight webinars that I run. Uh, the first one, as you can see there, is getting started. For, so for those of you like, I think it was Monica, who just got her catalogues out for the first time, hopefully this is perfect timing. Um, but uh, there's a series of eight, as I said, and they're all recorded. So at the end of the webinar, I'll show you or I'll explain where the recordings are. So if you particularly want to look into a bit more about building your customer base or a bit about supporting new team members, you don't have to kind of wait on to, for another three, four, five weeks. You can go to the recordings and, and just kind of get that get straight up to that one if you want to. So tonight, what we're we going to talk about? Um, so I'm going to talk a, a little bit about getting started straight away. There's an awful lot to learn in Clean Easy. It's it's a very simple business, but um, the longer you stay with it and the more you educate yourself, the better you will get. However, I'm going to explain it's really important to take action straight away. Don't stop thinking you've got to sit down and learn everything you everything as you can possibly learn about Clean Easy and um, before you, you get started. And um, make sure you're aware of your 30 day bonus that um, so you can get uh, take advantage of that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about preparing your catalogues, planning. It's really really important. As you're self employed you don't really have a boss telling you what to do. So you need to plan a bit about uh, what you're going to do yourself. Excuse me. Delivering and collecting your catalogues, and then placing your first order, receiving those goods, and delivering them to your customers. Now, as you can see, there I talk mainly about catalogues. I do uh, cover Facebook a little bit, um, but I'm going to um, just point you at. If, I'm sure you've already found it if you're interested in Facebook selling, and I know we've got some experts on here tonight anyway. Um, but on the Facebook side of things, there's some fantastic uh, videos already around, so I don't want to kind of duplicate all of that. But I'll show you where all those are. And just kind of run through the, the basics of that. But a lot of the information about you know delivering orders, customer service, and so on is is the same on whether you're doing it online or or with your catalogs. So getting started, it's really really important to just get started straight away. It's much better to get started now and then learn how to do it better. And um, as I've said there. Ignorance on fire is much better than knowledge on ice. So, you can get started immediately. The, the, the minute that you complete your registration and you can make the decision that this is what you're going to do, you can start telling friends and family, especially with think tools like Facebook now, it's really easy to tell people that you've started your own business. And, and the other thing is, if you want to start making money even before your catalogues arrive, then get yourself, if you're on Facebook already, you've got a big advantage, but even if you're not, don't think of Facebook as, as kind of um, something that, you know, that the young people do to, to share kind of pictures of kittens playing pianos with each other. Think of it as a tool to communicate with hundreds and thousands of people and um, as a clean easy distributor, if you don't do that, you're missing out on a big opportunity. So there are four videos that explain exactly, actually I think there's five, that explain exactly how to do all of this. That's the website there, www.sellonfb.co.uk. So if you haven't looked at that, I recommend that you do as soon as possible. And um, when Once you're on Facebook, if you've already got an account, then you can do this immediately. If you're not, then once you've set up your Facebook account. There's a, a group there called Clean Easy Online Sales. I think it's Hints and Tips, might be Tips and Hints. Um, if you find that and join that group, that is a really useful forum for sharing you know, what's working well, what isn't, any problems that you've got. Pretty much any problem that you have now, somebody else will have come across it, worked out how to solve it, and commented, it, commented on it in that group. So it's a fantastic place to, to go. So, when your catalogues arrive, first thing you need to do is get them ready. They come in the box, all kind of shrink wrapped up and everything with various other bits, your shoulder bag and so on. So you need to prepare them before you can go and start delivering them. And I'll expand on that in a moment. Um, but it's also really important just to show them to local friends and family. 
Uh, traditionally, and I'll expand on this, you just deliver the catalogs to, to houses near where you live. Um, and that's a great way to build up your local customer base. But to get orders quickly, you can't really beat showing them to people that already know you. So if you've got local friends and family, make sure you get round to see them, give them a call, say, put the kettle on, I'm just popping round to show you my new business, take a catalog round, a couple of catalogs round, and you can easily end up with sort of 50, 60, 70 pounds worth of orders just over a cup of tea. So a quick question, I'm not sure if there's anybody who's brand new in the business yet. Is there anybody who has not yet received their catalogs? I know a lot of you guys have been in the business for years and years and years, so you obviously have, but I know Monica, who is quite new, has just uh, got her catalogs out, which is great. Okay, I'm kind of going to assume that because of that silence, everyone's received their catalog if, if you're quite new, which is good. So, um, let me just explain a bit about the 30 day bonus. I know Sue just put a comment on there about the sound. Can I just check it? Are, are other people finding the sound okay? Or is it cutting out for everybody? Uh, okay, I guess it might be the just the, the internet at some point. On, obviously, if some people depends on where you, where you are and so on. Um, okay, I'm going to explain a bit about the 30-day bonus. The way the 30-day bonus works, it basically allows you to replace lots and lots of any catalogs that you lose when you first start off. And basically, what you do is in your first 30 days, if you can achieve 500 bonus points, that means placing around about 600 pounds worth of orders uh, in your first 30 days then you get this bonus. Um, now, quick question for people, uh, especially for maybe new starters, so Monica for example, I know some of you guys have been in the business for a while, so you've probably got your own opinions on it. Would you say placing £600 worth of orders in, in a month is going to be hard or easy? Okay, thanks Sue. Yeah, that's very true, Sean. Yeah, if you leave the catalogs in the corner of your bedroom, it will be pretty hard. Simple, yet yeah, that's that's the right word. That's the word I describe it as, Katrina. It's very simple. It's just you put your catalogs out as much as you can, and the more you put them out, the more you take them back in again, the easier you will find it. But just to give you a rough idea, to put six hundred pounds worth um, of orders in in a 30 days requires about 150 pounds a week in orders so 150 pounds a week times four that's your your 600 pounds um, now we all start off in our starter packs uh, unless you've started off with a small one because you're mainly going to be doing facebook selling but if you've started off on the the main catalog pack where you get 250 catalogs if you deliver those once a week put them out click them back in again that should be taking you eight to ten hours approximately a week. Now I would recommend that, you know, that's that's kind of the minimum that you need to be able to put into this. I occasionally get people that join that want to join the business and they just say, Oh, I'm just really looking for a couple of hours on a Saturday morning. And it's really difficult to, to build a business unless you've got you know, at least eight to ten hours, I would say. Um, so on average, you should be getting probably between fifty pence and a pound per catalogue when you first put them out. Um, so if you're putting 250 out, hitting 150 a week is not going to be far off. And if you do some Facebook selling and show them to friends and family as well, then getting 150 pounds in your first week is certainly very achievable. So what happens if you do that? So you, firstly, you get your first income. You can earn 125 pounds plus by putting in 150 pounds a week in orders uh, during your first month. But the, 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 the other big benefit of doing that is every time you put in an order of £150 in your 30 days, you get an extra box of 50 catalogues for free when you, when you receive your order. So if you do that four times, that's an extra 200 catalogues, plus if you hit the, the total of 600 in the 30 days, you get an extra 50 on top of that. So you would get an extra 250 catalogues on top of the 250 that you paid for in your starting pack. So that's that's really, really going to give you a fantastic start because you've got so many catalogs there. 
you will lose some at the beginning. We all do. There are people that throw it away, dogs that chew it and so on. And, but that tends to be a lot more in your first 30 days when you're going to new houses because when you're going back around um, the following year, month, you obviously cross out the people that said they didn't want it or they've thrown it away or if you've got a rabid dog in the, in the house. So you're not going back to those houses so you lose a lot fewer. Okay, so if you're wanting to put out your catalogues, the first thing you do is you just need to prepare those catalogues. So um, on each catalogue, uh, on the back of the catalogue, there's a small space to put your details. So you should get sticky labels in a, an envelope for, in a letter from head office with all your contact details on. Put the sticky label on the back of each catalogue and the day slips, and then you, you don't get the day slips with your starter pack. You will either need to print some off or your sponsor will have printed some off for you. And, and the day slips and the little sticky labels have your name on them. And that's really important because what you're doing here at the beginning, your customers will order simply because they recognize a clean, easy brand. But after a while, they get to know your name and they get to recognize you and the way you deliver your catalogs and the days you deliver and pick up and so on. And then they start ordering from you. So it's really important that you've got all of your details there for your customers to see and to get to know you. And as you're putting the catalogs together, you make every pack the same, but um, I always put one of the catalogs. So typically you will get two catalogs in your starter pack, the main one and a seasonal catalog. Like at the moment, it's a summer special and um, might be a Christmas catalog in a little while. There's kind of sale catalogs or spring specials and so on. I tend to put one of the catalogs, the seasonal one usually, upside down and back to front. And the reason for that I'll explain in a moment. When you come back to collect them, it'll, it'll make more sense. Um, you need the day slip at the front. That needs to be really visible so that your customers, those that are not going to open the catalogue pack up and have a look at it, know immediately what day you're going to collect them. And it says, please put the catalogue out even if you don't want to order and I'll collect it from you without disturbing you on Saturday or whatever day it's going to be. So that needs that, that day slip needs to be really visible at the front. Um, and I would recommend that you leave the catalogue with your customers for two days. So if I'm putting them out on a Monday, I will pick them back up on a Wednesday. If I was putting them out on a, a Friday, I'd probably pick them up on a Monday. So maybe an extra day over the weekend. But um, leave it with them for a couple of days. Um, and the order form, now there's a couple of, a couple of options you've got here. Personally, what I tend to do is I always have the order form visible at the back of the catalogue. So you've got the, the front of the catalogue, which is the main clean, easy one. You've got your day slip just in front of that. And then at the back, you've got the other catalogue and then the order form visible at, at, at the back there. The reason I do it that way is when you're going round, you can pick up the catalogue and just quickly look at the back of it and immediately see if the order form is there and if a customer has written on it or not. And it is really important that you check it at the time you're collecting it, not just take them all home and then have a look later. And again, I'll explain that uh, in a moment. The, uh, the plastic bags, the snap bags with the little kind of um, seal at the top, um, they are shop windows, so they need to be nice and clean and shiny. So make sure you change those regularly because they do get a bit grubby and dirty as you're leaving them out and the rain you know, it, it kind of rains on them occasionally and they get a bit dusty and so on. Um, then, um, oops, sorry. So yeah, so you need to be kind of changing them regularly. Okay, planning. Um, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning. When you start, first start cleaning, for a lot of people, it's the first time that they've ever had a little business, kind of been self-employed. Either they haven't worked before, or if they have, it's been as an employee. And when you're an, um, an employee, you've got a job, you're working for someone, it's normally fairly obvious what you have to do. You're, you'll go into work, your boss will say, right, I need you to do this and this and this. You can come in at 9 o'clock, you're allowed to finish at 5, your lunch break is da 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 um, So you don't really need a plan as such, because you get told what to do. But when you're self-employed, the only person who's going to tell you what time to start and what time to finish and what to do is you. So you need to make a plan. So I recommend you start off with a weekly planner. And that's basically just, just something that has, you know, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday across the top. And then maybe mornings, afternoons and evenings across there. 
and you can kind of block out the time that's not available to you. So if you've got other commitments, another school run or a part-time job or something else, you can block that out. And that shows you the time that you've got free to start building your clean easy business. So and then you need to plan that. So you need to plan what days am I going out? And as I said, allow a couple of days for the customers to look through the catalog. So maybe Monday morning is when you're going to deliver the catalogs. Wednesday afternoon is when you're going to pick them back up again. Then Thursday morning you're going to put out again and Saturday morning you're going to pick up or something like that. So make that plan and then stick to it. Don't think, ooh, the weather's not too good or I'm feeling a bit under the weather or maybe I won't go out today. If you had a job and you were pay and you were getting paid, you wouldn't sort of think, ooh, shall I go in today? I'm not sure or not. So you would stick to it. And you need to do the same as a as a clean easy distributor because if you don't have a plan that you stick to what you'll find is you start to drift and then you know after a month or two suddenly you're not earning as much money as you were hoping to and to be honest the, the main cause of that is people not kind of sticking to their commitment what they want to get out of the business we use a what we call a six by four routine when you're delivering your catalogs so basically what that means is you deliver a catalog back to the same houses about once a month once every four weeks uh, we, we say and so the first time you go out, you'll be delivering catalogs to brand new houses. And, you know, you, we normally say the best uh, advice is go out your front door, turn left and start popping them through letterboxes. And then obviously the second time you go out, maybe later on in that week, you'll go to some different houses. The following week, some different houses and so on. But after four weeks, come back to the beginning again so that your customers start to see that you're reliable. And they get to recognize your name and they see you about so they kind of know you're, you're a local distributor. They kind of know that you're local because you're there quite a lot of the time. And you go back even to the houses that don't order. You go back obviously to the ones that order from you, the ones that looked at the catalog, the ones that didn't look at the catalog. The only ones I wouldn't go back to are if people said, you know, I don't want to order, thank you. Don't, please don't give me a catalog anymore. Or if they said, nah, I'm not interested. I've thrown it away. Don't, don't give me any more. Because obviously any that you put through there, you're likely to either irritate the customer, irritate the person who lives there, or that you're just going to keep losing catalogs. So don't go back to those ones, but give all of the other ones another chance and another, and keep going back every month. And we say go back six times, because you'd be amazed how often people would, maybe the first time the catalog comes, they might be busy, so they don't get a chance to have a look at it. The second time they have a look and they think, Oh, a couple of interesting things in here. I never realized that. The third time, maybe they're on holiday. And then the fourth time, you get an order from them. And you're thinking, crikey, that was, that was strange. I've delivered to this house three times already. How come they ordered on the fourth time? And people are just busy these days. There's all sorts of different reasons why they don't order. But the interesting thing is, once they've ordered from you once, and they get to know you, and you're obviously polite and friendly when you go and deliver the order to them, Suddenly, they're not ordering from a faceless catalog that comes with a letterbox. They're ordering from Chris or Sue or John or Peter or Dave, whoever the distributor is. And because they get to know you, they've got that kind of emotional link with you. So they'll suddenly start ordering a lot more frequently. So you need to persevere at the beginning to give them as many chances as possible for them to order. So when you're delivering them, plan your route. As I said, the easiest thing to do is just to start close to home, go out your front door, turn left and start delivering catalogues. Don't flit about. It's, you know, it's easy to sort of think, oh, I think there might be a good area over the other side of town. So, you know, drive 20 minutes over town, park the car up, deliver your catalogues there, drive all the way back again. And you just, you know, from that point on, every time you're going back for stragglers and delivering orders and so on, you're having to drive across the other side of town. Of town. That there's no guarantee that the orders that you'll get there will be any better or worse than the ones you'll get in your own on your own street. So save yourself all that time by starting off close to home. The more customers you can find close to home, the bigger that advantage will be as you start to grow your business. And a good thing I did when I first started off, and I recommend this for everybody: print a little map with your kind of house in the middle. Uh, it's dead easy on Google Maps if you've got a printer, or, or get a you know a, a street map, and um, if if you haven't, if you can't do that, and um, print your house in the middle, and you can then just highlight each road as you've been round, so you make sure you don't miss any little nooks and crannies or any little roads that you you weren't aware of, 
So by highlighting each one, you can then spot where you've been and, and you'll know where to go back to in a month's time. Deliver to every house, and it's very easy to sort of think, oh god, that one looks a bit, I'm not sure, that you know, a bit messy in the garden, maybe they won't look after the catalogue very well, but you never know what the people are like in there, what their situation is. You have to give everybody the chance to order, otherwise, again, you'll find yourself delivering to streets and streets and streets and streets, just looking for the house that you think has the perfect customer in. So don't prejudge, give everyone the chance. Do deliver to houses that have these signs on. So you'll find a lot of houses these days have got signs on saying things like no cold callers, no street traders, no junk mail. In my experience, and I would say at least 40% of my customers have signs like that. What they mean is they don't want somebody knocking on the door saying, excuse me, madam, can I interest you in changing your electricity company? Um, have you got your electricity bill handy? Come and show me this. I'll sell you all this. You know, they don't want to be pressurised into buying something that they're not interested in. But they do like the opportunity to browse through the catalogue to, you know, at their own time, give them, give them plenty, you know, a couple of days, they can browse through the catalogue. And once they get to know you when you're coming back, then they really welcome you and they really appreciate the service that you di you provide to them, delivering their orders free of charge at a time that's convenient to them. So do deliver to all of these houses. The only ones that I don't deliver to is if there's anyone that actually has explicitly put no clean, easy catalogues, in which case I wouldn't. The only one to be aware of is if you go to a block of flats, then if you can get into the into the block and each flat has its own letterbox and its own door, then that's fine, just carry on as usual. But quite often you'll go to a block of flats where there's like 20 letterboxes, all one after the other, right by the front door. And it's tempting to think, fantastic, 20 catalogues, bum, 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 great, that's done. The problem with that is when you then come back to collect them, what you'll find is you might get 7 or 13 catalogues back in a pile on the bottom. And you've got no idea who's giving you it back and who hasn't. So you then have to knock on every door, press every buzzer, trying to find who, whether the person there has put the catalogue out or not, and you just end up, end up annoying lots of people and wasting lots of time. You can get around that. Um, like For example, if you know that there's, if you're going to be doing some flats, you could put a little sticky label on the outside of each plastic bag and then write the number of the flat on, the one on the first one, two on the second one, so then you see which ones you get back. So just be aware of that. Um, you, you might need to do something a little bit different with those flats. Um, you will come across other distributors. The clean Easy have been doing this for 25 years across the whole country and in Ireland. Um, and so pretty much every town will have a distributor. But as I found when I joined and my sponsor Sue Marshall, who lives just 200 yards up the road from me, she just said, and I've got my customers in and around the town, but you just carry on anyway. You'll find your customers in between theirs. And that's exactly what happened. So... If you come across somebody else, just you know, a friendly wave. Hi, how are you? How are you getting on? Um, it, it makes a lot of sense to kind of say hello and be friendly with other distributors. If you see somebody else's catalogue um, on the doorstep when you're delivering yours, carry on and deliver them anyway. You've got no idea whether that customer, whether that catalogue's been there a day or a week or a month, whether that distributor might have just left and has decided not to go back for them. Whether they're just an unreliable distributor and the customer would be really pleased to have somebody a bit more reliable to order from. So just ignore any other distributor, deliver them anyway. If the customer is happy with their distributor, they'll soon say, oh, thanks very much. I get a catalogue from Susie every, every month. I don't really need another one, thanks. And then you can cross them off your list. Make sure you take your little round books, those, those round books that are not round, but that you, that you get with your starter pack. Um, just keeping a track of all the houses that you've delivered a catalogue to. That's really important for when you go to collect them. But also, as you're delivering your catalogues around, you might have somebody come up and stop say, oh, excuse me, sorry, I, I don't need this, thanks, we already get one. So then you can cross that one off, you know, so you don't remember you don't need to go back and collect it from, from that house. Um, and just all the usual kind of polite stuff. Uh, close gates behind you as you're going into and out of gardens. Walk on footpaths, don't walk across people's lawns or gardens. You know, they might spend a lot of time and effort on their garden and they're not going to appreciate you tramping across it. Um, 
But do talk to everybody you come across. Just a, a, a smile. Hi, how are you? Just dropping your cleaning catalogue in. Um, you'll be amazed how many times people will order just simply because they thought, oh, that's not a friendly person. You know? And then off you go, carrying on with a cheerful smile, as it were, down the road, delivering the rest of your catalogues. Um, and just if you're feeling cheerful and you're chatting to people as you go along, it's, it's just a great way to, to kind of build up rapport with your community and with people in your area. Okay, so when you're delivered your catalogues, you're going back to collect them a day or two later. Make sure you take your round book again, so you've got your list of all of the houses that you've delivered to. Um, and that's really important. And make sure you also take your thank you slips to thank your customers who have ordered from you. But also you will find some people haven't put the catalogue out, um, so you'll need some sorry I missed you slips as well. So you need to be a little bit organised to take all these bits with you. And then as you're going along, for every house, you need to record in your round book whether you've got the catalogue back or not. So a little note to say you know, whether you got it back, and whether they ordered or not, and whether they looked at it or not. Now you might say, how do I know whether they've looked at my catalogue? Well, if you remember at the beginning, when I was talking about preparing your catalogues, by putting one of the catalogues in back to front and upside down, what you'll find is sometimes it's really obvious. Everything's been taken out, everything's been put back in in a different order, and it's really obvious that they've looked at it. And, but sometimes people will try to be helpful and put everything in back neatly for you. And you can usually tell because the catalogue that was back to front and upside down has been put facing the same way as the main catalogue. So that's useful information because if you find somebody who's looking at the catalogue regularly, even if they're not ordering at the beginning, there's a great chance that they will order because they're looking. And then the other thing that's really, really important is as you pick the catalogue up, check the order form on the doorstep when you pick it up. Don't just put them all in your trolley, take them all home and then think, oh, that's okay, I'll check them all when I get back, that'll be quicker. Because I can guarantee that when you get back, you'll be going through them and you'll find an order form with a nice little order on for 30 or 40 pounds and they've forgotten to write their name and address on. And you're thinking, oh, crikey, which house was that? And you could have 250 houses and you're thinking, oh, what do I do, go back and knock on every door? So by just checking on the doorstep, even if, though obviously you won't know their name and their telephone number, at least you can write you know, 27 Johnson Street or whatever, so you know where to go back with the order once you've got it. If there isn't a catalogue there, quick knock on the door, I normally just say, oh, hi there, I, I just wondered if you'd finished with the Clean Easy catalogue I dropped in a couple of days ago. And nine times out of ten, it's right by the front door, and they just forgot to put it out. So they say, oh, I'm really sorry. Here it is, Chris. Thanks for that. Um, sometimes people might say, oh, sorry, I haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet. In which case, always say, oh, that's okay. Would you like to hang on to it for a day or two? Because what, you're, what you'll find is nine times out of ten, if they say, oh, yeah, oh, thanks very much, that when you go back the next day or the day after, whenever you agree that you'll, you'll pick it back up again, you'll have an order. Because they're already kind of indicating that they were interested in looking at it and ordering. And by saying that, yes, that's no problem at all, you're kind of doing them a favour, allowing them to keep it a bit. And you'll often find people will order from you because you kind of had to take the trouble to come back a second time. And if there's nobody in, just make sure you pop a little, sorry I missed you, reminder slip through. And again, what you'll often find then is when whether they've been, you know, been out shopping or they've been out at work, when they come home, They'll see their little reminder slip and they think, oh, you forgot to put that catalogue out. They just put it straight out then. So you can pop back that evening or the following morning and you'll pick up lots of the catalogues that you didn't get when you went around the first time. So these stragglers, the, these ones that you didn't get back the first time, as I said, you might get back the next day, but go back the next day. Even if the next day when you go back it's not there, knock on the door again, pop a little reminder slip through if there's no answers. Go back at least three or four times because... People are busy, they're forgetful, you know, somebody might pick the catalogue up and put it on the side and then somebody else doesn't realise what it's there for and they move it. There's all sorts of things can happen. But if you go back three or four times, what you'll find is that you will get more of them back each time you go and people realise that you're serious about this and that the catalogues are important to you. So they make sure they put them out. And I always do, what I tend to do is then... Um, a week later, so if, you, if your catalogue says, please put it out on a Thursday, and you've gone back maybe on the Friday, the Saturday, and the Monday, I would go back the following Thursday, 
because sometimes what you'll find is that they've been on holiday, they come back, they don't know the catalogue's been there for four or five days, so they just assume you want it the next Thursday, so they'll put it out then. And all of this kind of going back three or four times, going back to a week later and so on, that kind of reinforces the importance of why you should start locally. If you've driven 20, 20 minutes to the other side of town to put your catalogues out, and you're going back three or four times for a few stragglers, it's easy to think, oh, perhaps I won't bother. And the trouble with that is you lose more catalogues, you'll miss out on orders, and you're effectively saying to your those potential customers, ah, oh, the catalogue's not that really important to me. If I don't get it back with a couple of times, you can just keep it. And if they don't think it's important to you, then they won't worry too much about putting it out again next time. Okay, I'm going to just briefly go through some Facebook selling. So I appreciate it's half past eight, guys, so I've still got a little bit to cover, but I won't be long. Um, so, Facebook selling, I mentioned that group earlier on. So, if you, sorry, the, the website with the, the videos on. Um, so, make sure you go to that www.sellonfb.co.uk. But basically, um, when you're selling on Facebook, you should be joining 30 to 60 local groups. You need to create your own group, that's like your own shop. And um, firstly, you need to make sure you post products in your own group. So, 10 or so products from both catalogues. It's, it's great to have a good mix of things. The duvet sets or the, the cutlery sets sell really well. But don't just put those up. Put a variety of different things up because you're, you're trying to showcase all the different things that you've got. And then every day, or as often as you can, four or five times a week if, if, if not, um, in your group and in the other groups that you're in, Post one or two new products, bump one or two of the ones that you've that you've sold before, and um, and and what you'll find is that gradually more and more people um, will order from you, and also, and this is the big thing, make sure that on in all of the products that you're posting in the local groups, you include an invitation to join your group, and you can put a link to it. So just copy and paste the link to your group and say, you know, I always say something like, to view the rest of our bargains and special offers please join us at and then the, the link to your group and you'll be amazed how many people will join your group even if they weren't interested in buying whatever it was you were kind of promoting on that day because they want to see what else you've got um, and it just allows you to by having your own group you can start to build a rapport and a relationship with all of your customers and um, I had a great example when I first started the um, the personalized baby cushion. So basically you get, get the baby's name, date of birth and weight printed um, on the, the cushion cover. Uh, and one of my customers, she was actually a catalog customer, but she also logged on in, into my Facebook group. I knew she had twins and their birthday was coming up. So she sent me the details through saying, oh, Chris, can you order me one of these? And you know, one pink and one blue and um, whatever the names were. Um, I, thought I should know the names, but anyway, the names, the weight and the date of birth and I noticed that the date of birth that she put on them were different and I thought ah oh, Libby's made a mistake they obviously not typed it incorrectly I think 14th was one and 15th was so I went back to Libby and said Libby I think you've made a mistake you've put different birth dates on for them and she said yes that's right they were born either side of midnight so one was on the 14th one was on the 15th and I thought what a fantastic story that is and I said Libby are you happy for me to share that story with the rest of the group, because I think that's fantastic. You know, what a great story they'll have. My, my twin sister's got a different birthday to me. So uh, she said, yeah, she's got no, no problem with that. So she sent me a photo of the twins with their cushion covers, and I shared that with the group. And that was brilliant. That created a real buzz of people, you know, especially lots of other mums with children and that, all chatting to Libby, and just within my group, talking about these products, which is fantastic. So any little stories or customers' photos, Make sure you put those in your group as well as just the kind of the stock photos that you might be posting as well. Um, okay, placing your first order or any order really, um, that's the website that you go to. Your sponsor should hopefully help you through all of these as well. Um, make sure you remember your password from when you first did your registration. You have to create the password. Um, and as you're going through placing the different items, just remember that if you get halfway through putting an order in and you put half of the items in but you haven't got time to finish it or you know you're going to go back for some stragglers later that evening so you want to wait, then any partial orders are remembered so you can log off 
when you log back on again, it will all be there. You don't have to kind of type them all in from scratch again. And um, be aware of the delivery cutoff time. What I mean by that is if you place an order by, and to be honest, I normally say 3 o'clock. It's actually 3.15, but if you place an order by 3 o'clock, then it will be delivered to you within two working days. So put it in 3 o'clock on a Monday, you will get the order delivered to you on the Wednesday. There's a few exceptions. I think if you're in Northern Ireland, no, Republic of Ireland, it's an extra day. And I know the Isle of Wight, for example, is an extra day. But generally, two working days, as long as you get it in by 3 o'clock. If it was after 3 o'clock on the Monday, it would be Thursday when it gets delivered to you. Um, and then, so on that day, the Thursday, the Wednesday, when the, the goods arrive in lots of boxes and blue bags for the, the, the longer items, um, what you need to do is unpack all of the boxes. So you need a big kitchen table or something like that. That's what I normally do. And then sort them out into your different customers' orders. So you've got all the order forms that the customers have written on. What I normally do is put each of the customer's items into a carrier bag and then staple the blue receipt to the carrier because then when I'm giving the goods to the customer, I can say, there's your receipt on there with all of my details if you've got any questions and so on. And also, if I've got like um, all of these carriers in my car, um, it's easy for me to find the one for Mrs. Johnson or Mrs. Smith because I can kind of easily see the receipts, but, you know, the order form stapled to them. I use the uh, the empty boxes to hold the order, so you can you know put 10 or 15 carriers for all the different items into a box, and then carry the whole box to my car. That's what I tend to do. And um, hi, ladies. Yes, they do. I saw that just message there. There's a code. If you go into the search at the bottom there and just type in carrier, I think it comes up with the different options. Um, and then I use the pink receipts. Most of my customers don't tear their copy off; they give them both back. And I just use the pink receipts as my kind of checklist as I'm driving around to make sure I've delivered them all. And then when you're delivering your orders, um, what you will often find, and I know it varies and you can influence this by um, suggesting whether people would like to come and collect it, Facebook buys will often come and collect from you, which is fantastic because it kind of means you can, you can kind of do all of that from literally from the comfort of your own home. But if you're delivering to your customers, either through Facebook or if they're catalog customers, usually you'll deliver to them, then um, I always give them a quick call first. If you've got their telephone number, hi, Mrs. Johnson, it's Chris from Clean Easy. Um, is it convenient to pop around with your order? And I've had so many customers tell me they really appreciate that call. Just because it kind of gives them a couple of minutes to get the, gather their thoughts, grab their purse, find the money, whatever it is they want to do. Um, and also, you're not knocking on the door disturbing them while they might be in the middle of their lunch or dinner or anything like that. So, And if they're not in, then it saves you a journey because you can just leave a message for them or send them a text or something. And then you'll just get a call back or a text back to say, oh, sorry, Chris, I'm back home now. Pop around whenever you want. And your customers can pay you um, either cash, checks or card. There's a, a card payment line, so um, I can... If anyone's not sure about that number, let me know. I'll, I'll explain what that is. Um, mostly cash and occasional checks. And sometimes you'll get uh, customers will ask, well, who do you want them made payable to? I always get them to make it payable to me. Um, but if they've already written it out, and I've got a few customers that already make it sort of written out to Clean Easy, then that's fine. And um, if the checks are made out to Clean Easy, you just need to pay them into a branch of the NatWest um, using one of your official gyro slips. And it's important that you use the, the proper gyro slips and, the, and the, the ones that you order directly from Clean Easy because they have your account number on. And obviously Clean Easy get lots of checks paid into their account. And if they can't work out which account number it is, you know, it'll take them a while to track it down and credit your account. So make sure you use the right gyro slips for that. Um, as I said earlier, I think when I deliver the goods to the customer, I give them the, the blue order form back with my details on there. And I just highlight the fact that there's my contact number on that. If you've got any problems at all, I'm happy to replace it or give you a refund. Just give me a call anytime. Whew, sorry, guys. So that uh, took a little bit longer than I was uh, expecting, but I think we'll come towards the end now. So let me give you a quick check to see who's still awake and who's fast asleep. First question, how many weeks before you would deliver a catalog back to the same house. Look, you guys are already ahead of me. Liz, top marks, four weeks, four, 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 four. Oh, fantastic. You guys are all wide awake. Well done. Okay, 
How many Facebook groups should you join, approximately? Oh, Sean. Oh, you guys are so quick. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. You're right. Well done, Nina. Katrina, yeah, 50. I'll give you that. I mean, 30 to 60, it's obviously just a rough idea. That I know there are some people who are in more than 60, but if you just join five groups and you're struggling to sell um, on those groups, that's probably the reason why. Okay, that 30-day bonus I talked about, can you remember how much in orders you should aim to, to get to qualify for your extra free catalogues? Yep, 500 bonus points, Sean, that's right. 600 pounds, Katrina, well done. Yep, that's it, 600 pounds. So basically, that every time you put in 150 pounds in orders, you get 50 free catalogues. And there's no limit to how many times you do that. So um, you can put in um, 150 pounds twice a week and do it eight times if you want. You get 50 lots of free catalogues with you. Yeah, Liz, don't worry. That there's no such thing as failure. That's right. You know that there's you can get uh, you just run the business at your own pace. The 30-day bonus is a target, but just because you don't hit the target doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you're doing it differently. Exactly. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, for everybody who's in the business now, um, well, sorry, I don't know why I said that because you all are. How many catalogues a week do you plan to deliver? So actually what I'd like to ask is rather than how many do you deliver now, because I know some of you have got customer base, so you might be working a bit differently, but when you first started, can you remember how many catalogues a week you aim to get out? Liz, 400 or more, that's fantastic, that's great. Shannon, Stu, 50 a week. Now I know that that is, I'm guessing, yeah, 50 a week, that's fantastic, because I know you did a lot of Facebook selling first, so 400 a week, that's brilliant. Well done, Sean and Stu. Yeah, Katrina, that's good, 200. I normally say to all my new starters, you get 250 in with your starter pack. Try to get them all out at least once a week. So if you can do 250 or 400 a week, then that's fantastic, because that will give you a good start. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're earning, if you're looking to build up a full-time income as quickly as possible, you know, the catalogues are not earning you a penny if they're in your own house. So just as soon as you get them back in, get them straight back out again. Okay, that's what we covered this evening. There's quite a lot in there, quite a busy one. Uh, as you can see there, next week we're talking about your first four weeks. So I've talked a bit about the catalogues and the Facebook side of the business. What else should you be doing in your first four weeks? That's what we're going to talk about next week. And just to finish off, I said that these uh, webinars are all recorded. So if you want to go to any of the other webinars or if the sound wasn't great for you on this one or there was anything in here that you wanted to go over again at your own time, then you can view them all there on the recordings on YouTube. Just go onto YouTube and search for Chris Smith Clean Easy and you'll find them all there. All right, I'm just going to...